Hi, good day. This is Mr. Shadrach with the Shadrach Safety Institute coming at you with another tutorial session for the Nibosh National General Certificate. Um, again, this lesson is on the heels of the uh, previous lesson that we did on um, culture. And uh, this again is uh, for the certificate students. Um, same PowerPoint you would have had, I guess, from last week right i'm just trying to get some stuff prepared in the background here right so i think what i'll do um i am using a bit of a um, external microphone um with this session hopefully this would be able to help with the app that had kept dropping before um i guess we'll see anyway this is the first time using all of these um software and facilities you know because of the covid situation right so if you have um the powerpoint um this would be the same one on culture right and um i think what i've decided to do seeing that these uh videos are kind of long um i had some feedback from some students you know uh, indicating that it may have been a long hour sitting right so what I'll do I think what I'll do with this one even I, I would not complete the whole um, you know slides but I'd cover about three concepts and I think those three concepts are quite enough um, to keep us going anyway right so um, just for revision and I don't want to back up the slides too too much anyway here um, but uh, if, if you have it this would have just uh, the three types of communication verbal uh, written and graphic communication so this was just at the end of that um, the last video we had posted for the certificate students and I fairly well believe that this uh, presentation can be used by both classes I, I guess even though the the first class would have completed um, uh, uh, culture I guess already they would have not had a video session on it right so you can look at this in terms of the present uh, morning class uh, from 8 to 10 and then the second class as well I guess all can have a look at the presentation right um, I have not seen much of people doing questions I haven't seen much of them um, I have seen a lot of the project though from the first class and um, I guess we are trying to get those out to you as soon as possible um, it does take some time to correct and remember if you do your work I guess on um, Saturday night you know nine o'clock ten o'clock in the night um, I would you know look at it I guess first thing on Monday right Tuesday whatever have you right so they do take some time to good you know there, there's often a lot of comments that goes with them as well but keep them coming I am still you know um, I've seen some I've seen probably about quarter of the present class but um, you know keep them coming anyway right so I'm um, also in this um, session I am gonna make mention of some past papers again now remember um, I guess you can slow the video down and copy the past paper out or take a note of it I would probably try to mention about three so you can do any of those questions are not quite available now I have one on this like when I said not quite available some of these questions are old questions some very old pass papers um, so these are not on any Bosch website per se remember again with the new um, course there's not much and when I say not much there's actually just one pass paper that is available on the Nibosh website Putting into the National General um, course anyway, right? So um, I would try to capture it on this screen, uh, capture as well, and um, hopefully you will be able to see it. You know, probably just pause the video and perhaps write it down and give it a try. Um, we are trying to put some of the answers in it, same as the last presentation. I would have given the answers as well. The answers were actually on the slide. Um, all that we are asking for you to do is probably put pen to paper and write it back I guess the way that you would have done it or the way that um, that you see fit anyway right so um, so the thing to know as we get into this one now 
that this lesson is also on cult here, right? I know it doesn't look that way, but the whole chapter is on cult here, right? So if you remember the concepts, the concepts, um, I guess maybe just, you know, just a quick review uh, would have been that um, you had to define what was safety cult here. And again, just at the end of it, the concept was that if culture was not where it had to be, uh, there would have been means of communication by which the employer can influence the employee. And those means would have been verbal, written, and graphic. Now, in the same, you know, I guess, train of thought with that, we talk about what we have on this slide here now, which is that um, in the UK, um, part of the way of, you know, getting the culture or getting the message of culture across to the workers is via consultation so it's almost the same as communication right um so that is the same train of thought that this is still about culture so it's still about improving the culture of the company right what they have here here though and i'll just do some explanation is that the first point relates to the fact that you have um two laws uk that really makes consultation a legal requirement right if you take a look at it it says the employer must consult their workforce on a range of health and safety issues and um, that would really pertain to anything that affects the employee you know both negatively and positively so for example a change to risk level uh, you know, again, I mean, again, each point could be explained, but it's going to be longer than the 30 minutes anyway. But I suppose if you would have done um, a risk assessment, and let's say the risk, you know, that the risk level turned out to be um, nine, right? The likelihood of a hazard being realized was three, and the severity was also three. Three by two will give you nine. But then, if something was to change, perhaps I guess with um, maybe a chemical they were using and uh, maybe they had to change the chemicals it was no longer maybe an irritant perhaps it is more of something that is toxic in nature a bit more you know worse off than an irritant so the workers are now going to be using this chemical you know um that is now toxic toxic means you know it's poisonous then the risk level would have changed so then the employees need to be consulted about that right so all of that works towards the culture of the company introduction of a new technology any arrangement to use competent specialists is the word that's in the corner here persons right so i've actually found this one you know in most of the companies that i go to um you know once a company you know takes us on to be you know like a consultant that they do have to inform the employees right you know sometimes like you may get in a company and uh, if they didn't do that you know people will want to know well who are you i mean how come you know you are walking you know through this company how come they see you in the company right and uh, so once once someone is hired it is the duty of the employer to let the employees know well you know hear what from you know next week monday we have a consultant on the compound right when you see him or her you know it's just a matter of cooperating with them so you know uh there's a need to consult and um i mean again uh not to really mention them at this first first slide but this is a past paper question now i've dealt with it a lot on this slide but i guess i can see it for those who want to follow through right that the past paper question here sometimes that they like to ask is to identify eight types of information or eight items that the employer should consult you know the employees about so in other words i guess in trinidad you know palangs then um what is eight things that the employer must consult the employees about and that's quite an easy question you have three on the slides here my way of looking at that is, is saying typically that they need to consult with them with everything you know for example um you know changing rules that they may have had right maybe they would have had a, um, a smoking policy and then they're looking at changing that out uh, to a no smoking policy those things is not just a matter of being delegated but it's a matter of consulting with the employees to hear what are those well what are their views and then to make a decision anyway right so um that was a passive per day but it's dealt with a lot on this slide um so 
they had in here cooperation and consultation with the workforce and uh, contractors is mentioned on the syllabus so what must the employer consult the workforce about and there's an example of contractors so what do they tell con this is really simple you can just think of just think about this for example like any contractor coming to work on a construction site what do the employer need to tell them and the answers could be simple things as for example what are the rules on their site and we can come back to the idea of the smoking policy you know what is the employers take on smoke on the job site you know like do they want workers smoking or do they want them not smoking so they need to know you know what are the health and safety rules to follow what are the health and safety standards right they need to know um what is the health and safety policy of the company right uh, they need to know for example like how would the contractor supervise their own workers right so all of these are items for consultation anyway right upside so typical rules for contractors you know could include and again all of these if you look at the head and this is still on consultation what must the employer consult the workforce about the example here being contract items to consult about would be you know to inform the organization and this would be the contractor organization of any harmful substances brought into their premises to observe any speed restrictions while on the premises so these are things that they can talk about right so for the contractors to observe any pp requirement while on the you know the employer's premises to familiarize themselves and that of the employees with any emergency action to take you know um, on the compound itself so they need to consider here and they need to consult with the contractors about you know what do you do in the event of an emergency where do you go right it would really be up to the employer or should i say the parent company to say where are the muster points you cannot leave it for the contractors to decide you know where are our must what you don't want you really don't want you know like one set of contractors going to the east and another set of contractors going to the west and then you know there's confusion about where is the master point where are the safer areas on a site so consultation is important you know um again nibosh really is just about um eight marks for these questions anyway so if you can think of eight things to be consulted you know with employees about that would be a fair go and we have already had more than eight some on the other slides as well anyway right um so we'll come back to this in a bit there's a bit of legal requirement for this but it's about four slides down right so there's another one here safety committees now a safety committee could facilitate that consultation to a certain extent i guess it could more facilitate cooperation in the company right but a safety committee can facilitate or it could be the means then by which you know like the employees are consulted with you know as you go about from your day-to-day -day operations so um if you don't know anything about this i guess you know just to tell you from the start that it is a legal requirement even here in trinidad and tobago under the ashak to have a safety committee and uh, you must have one you know basically once you have more than five you know some some standards say five the uk you know trinidad says 25 anyway employees and um what this is this is not your toolbox talks this is uh for one day in the month you have a group of persons would meet maybe about five and what they do they will be planning for health and safety for example they would plan um like you know like next month they would probably plan for you know doing a presentation on defensive driving right uh they would probably plan for training for the company right so a lot of things that they do is also a subject of passive questions anyway right but they drive health and safety is really what the committee uh decides is what the company would see for example on a monday morning meeting right um so just to walk you some of uh, some of that here the, the committee would normally have about um you know I, i'm saying five and that's based on the number of persons in the company i guess in the company because the bigger the company the more persons you need to have right but i know committees are not very big it may get about 15 for very big companies 
for a small company uh, 25 employees you may have one or two persons that is in that committee anyway right and um, we we'll talk about the composition of the of the committee as we go along uh, again all of those are passive per questions like who makes up the safety committee now uh, you know it, it, it is of course the safety but it could have other persons inside it that are not really safety related anyway right so you can also think about that who you think will make up a safety committee and um, you know safety yes but who else you think will make up a safety committee anyway right so the second point here should have a broad spectrum of persons from the organization can include one senior manager to demonstrate senior management commitment so that is i guess the second person you'll have i guess the safety whether or not if the person is a safety advisor um, or a safety professional someone with a degree um, another person that is a must in a safety committee is a senior manager right so uh, that is very important without a manager being in your committee your committee may tend to be not effective if it's just the safety you know poor safety person right poor safety you know um, advisor trying every Monday you know or every month right um, trying to have a meeting going with some of the workers but if no managers are there oftentimes you may find that what would have been said in the monthly meetings and, and I guess in the committee meetings is not being reflected in the managers meeting or the managers are not aware of it now I say aware of it because they could have um, the, the minutes of the meeting now the minutes of the meeting is just you know a sheet of paper anyway but there's a different vibe then you know there's a different um, you know element about it if the safety managers are actually there in the meeting and they hear the frustrations right they hear the plight of the workers then it goes a long way as opposed to at the end of a you know at the end of the committee meeting someone typing up you know the minutes and saying that you know Frank said that we would have requested PPE for the last three months and we have not gotten it now reading it on paper is one thing but then if the manager was actually there he would have heard you know the I guess the frustrations right and the anger that the workers may have had you know to get the PPE so having a senior manager is very important so that the message could be sent to management and maybe to directors of that company right so they must meet regularly and again once for the month is sufficient and actioned items um, the word in the corner here must be completed within this set time scale again that's very important for a safety committee right it makes no sense right of course this happens of course a lot around the world but it makes little sense if you have met and you provided in the next month and then that month comes and then you know you have no PPE for the workers and of course you can think of this as many other aspects for example training right maybe maybe you would have suggested that you know workers you know undergo defensive driving first aid whatever have you and then month after month that is not being done now what that will do for the committee it will make the committee ineffective or basically as we say in Trinidad you know a waste of time and that sooner or later uh, the employees and even I guess those very same committee members would realize that you know we are meeting every month we are discussing the same thing over and over and the action items they are not being done right and then what happens at a company like that you end up having you know I guess no safety committee at the end of the day now remember all of this comes back to culture so again if senior managers are there and they are hearing the plight of the workers they can action off the items and insist that those items be done and if it's not done hold folks accountable for why those actions are not done right so you understand the importance of um, not just the safety trying to push you know um, you know the cause of safety with normal employees but also managers directors must be present in the safety committee meetings right so 
Um, I'll read some of this one. Um, safety committees should have well-stated objectives as this will drive in the organization. That simply means, you know, that they know why they are meeting. They know what they are about. They know that, you know, they have a goal to achieve then, right? So they have an aim, right? So the safety committee will say that, you know, from the start of the year, we want to reduce accidents to zero right or perhaps maybe it was a bad a bad set of accidents and then you may you may like you may just have an immediate goal right or for example like a, a quarterly goal so then for the quarter you can say for three months running you can say that we want to reduce accidents by 50 percent right so then that's why you meet and that is what you want to achieve right i guess another simple example there could have been um they want to have a safety campaign a safety week right so they want to have a safety week coming up maybe in the next quarter so when they meet for the month that will just be i guess two times a the month that they want to get this safety campaign off the ground right maybe they want to talk about things like um, health and welfare maybe they want to talk about risk assessments they want to raise the overall perception of safety in the company they want to have a safety week right with, with presenters and videos and flyers and guest speakers and whatever have you so they have a goal that will drive you know that meeting anyway right what are some other things the safety com uh, co um, committee can do they could um, include a study of accidents and incidents trend so they can look at you know like what's happening in the company how come you know that we are having a lot of accidents with the forklifts right or how come we have a lot of accidents by the front gates and that could have been as a result of speeding and they can look at those trends anyway right they could look at the results of audits conducted in the past and try to figure out what is going wrong they can review any new legislation and how it can potentially affect the organization they could review risk assessments and recommend again from the corner there uh, from the safety representatives or the recommendations from the safety representatives they can look at feedback from employees so quite a lot of stuff and work there for the safety committee to look at right um so we started looking at this and again i i did mention um a couple of participants so this is again another one um that if you want i kind of slow it down so that you'll hear it pretty well anyway um so uh, quite a famous one is like what would influence how effective a safety committee you know is or is not anyway right so what you think would affect a safety committee right what you think that when they meet for the month how do you know then that the committee is effective and how do you know or what factors would make them not effective right and some of them we started them on the slides already right we spoke about for example like being present or i guess not being present right so this is uh again very simple um you know all you have to do is think about it you know um if you were ever part of anything didn't have to be safety if you were part of a group at school if you were, I guess, in church or in temple or in mosque and they had some, you know, um, something that you would put in charge of or something that you are a part of, you know, what made that group effective, right? What made it a success and then what will not make it a success, right? And before I go into this here, I mean, just some really simple ones that I remember from of my experience would have been, um, you know, um, um, really... A lot right but i guess maybe to take kind of zone down on two would have been um you know like the committee they don't have a place to meet it, it sounds simple right but you know like if you want to have a meeting you'd want to have a meeting room right i have actually been in companies where you know when it was that time to have the committee meeting right in the month anyway even though it would have been rusted even though it would have been sent on the intranet you know a reminder that you know on the 5th of april you know whatever 10 30 is the safety committee meeting and you do have people coming when they get on site they don't have a place to meet right uh, i've actually been in one where 
we were actually placed almost like in the washroom right at the front of the washroom area um to have a safety committee meeting and this was after you know scheduling and booking a meeting room that was carded to be the committee meetings but you know at the last hour the managers took the room for i guess an important um you know client meeting right and again remember all of this is linked to culture in the company right so simple examples as that and those of us who are working in safety you'll know that these are quite common that you don't have a consistent place to meet right um the other thing though is that if you have five persons in the committee and uh, all five of them don't show up right it makes the committee ineffective for example if you have let's say you have three persons in the month of february right the other two would have been on a project you know out on the field offshore etc but then in the month of march when you have your committee the other two comes to the meeting now and then the first three you had in february you know would have been placed on the field now that that, that makes the committee ineffective because it is almost as if what you said in february you have to go back and say again in the month of march right so you have a lot of stuff like that for example poor attendance right uh you know inconsistent members coming to the meeting is what makes it ineffective so if you could think of it like that you can just add to what i have on this slides right for those who you know don't quite know my teaching style my style is really to get you to understand right if you could understand you know you don't have to learn what i have on the slides right you know i mean these would have been written but it is in no way um exhausted and when i wrote these slides it is not as if these are all the answers in the world these are just some potential answers if you think about it think right and what will make it ineffective and they are really simple answers that i that would have stuck to some of the more complicated ones on this slide but they are really simple answers right uh you know i, I give you two there i could just think about another one another one this may seem very simple is a lack of welfare facilities see imagine you do have your safety committee members there but then you are placed in a room now without any ac so as much as you could be trying to get the point across you know no drinking water no access to welfare facilities simple issues like those could cause the committee to be ineffective in practice right so i'll read through what i have here and i'll probably give you another easy one that um that i would have gone through already so um factors which influence how effective a safety committee right is or is not poorly stated objectives and unrealistic targets which makes them ineffective poor chairmanship and that's a really good one that's a really really good one um you know if the hsc advisor is the chairman and i say if because they don't have to be it can just be someone that is you know sort of outgoing anyway but if the person is the chairman the hsc advisor is the chairman and he or she cannot you know control a crowd and i say a crowd maybe a crowd of five or ten or fifteen but they have poor chairmanship and poor chairmanship means that um you know like when i say control a crowd it could be that someone in the five is more loud or more outgoing than the chairman so the chairman may station about talking about you know the need for wearing ppe but then the meeting snowballs into what someone else want to talk about so someone else may want to talk about you know um salaries or rate of pay or i guess even the fact of not getting the pp in the first place so then you find that um even though you have a person standing in front that person is not the chairman of the meeting the meeting is taken over then right you know by other folks who are a little bit more outgoing than the chairman right so um you can think about yourself as well um think i guess think about yourself as well those of us who are burden safeties if you can do that 
if you can stand in front of a group of workers and again it could be a small number um, or or um, or or 20 or 30 workers right you know and and ask yourself if if you all could control that that amount of persons 5 20 30 etc and then how would you do it right I mean you do have to be a bit loud or assertive and loud may not quite be assertive but you get the idea that you have to be loud enough so people will hear what you have to say right and um, you do have to be assertive and again you really don't have to be everybody's friend but you really have to you know put your foot down and say you know what you have to say and that may involve I'll tell you how it's done that may involve you know um, telling someone you know that you know thank you for your contribution but we need to move on to another important point right you may even want to tell them things like um, you know the rest of it you can discuss with me personally and uh, let's move on with with the meeting right so the chairman has to have some leadership skills otherwise meeting overtaken by every issue right and uh, there's a way of getting that done um, that I use a lot which is um, the one two three four five the fifth point right which is uh, sticking to the agenda with my meetings um, I normally um, time them right so I normally have uh, you know if you had opening remarks or prayer I guess prayer would be first uh, one minute two minutes etc right if you have like you know um, uh, matters arising from the previous meeting maybe five to ten minutes and uh, if you have your item to discuss which may be for example you can probably think about what's going on in Trinidad now and I guess around the world the state of you know work when it comes to you know like the COVID-19 you know who works who stays at home but you have that there for 20 to 30 minutes so that is the bulk of the meeting anyway and again at the end of the 30 minutes uh, what I do even if the matter is not concluded and somebody is um you know hot and sweaty as we say in Trinidad I, I still you know put an end to it at the end of the 30 minutes and a lot of folks you know a lot of companies have gone to they actually respect me for that you know a lot of people um, in the meeting it may come off as being a bit um, rude of course I try not to be too assertive with it but I just say it in a nice way that you know ladies and gentlemen we have passed you know the time allotted for this item you you you, uh, you could actually find that there's a couple of up, like upset people there but at the end of it we actually do try to meet those same persons and you know hear their concerns one on one and a lot of companies do respect the fact that you start your meeting on time and you also finish your meeting on time all of those show like the companies and I mean like your managers directors that you have good leadership you know skills about what you are doing anyway right I remember doing one many years ago for Neil and Massey and this was this was quite um, of course this is when they were Neil and Massey as you I did mention some some years ago that I remember the end of it you know I, I did what I had to do and I didn't even think twice about it someone was trying to you know push their views in the meeting and I think I told them you know something quite simple like this you know this isn't the forum for it etc and you know, I would meet with them afterwards and, and whatever have you and then at the end of the, I guess at the end of the meeting a couple of directors came and they said that um, no one ever told the man you know to basically you know um, you know you know not to I guess to shut up as we say in Trinidad anyway right and I didn't think twice about it and I guess I got the fever of the company then you know um, seeing that that there was a bit of chairmanship style there anyway right and I did meet with that person and that person later on came, um, became one of my best friend in fact we, we still kind of chat about um, some things that he was into would have been things like um would have been things like planting you know vegetation right so you know um, I still kind of lays with the person about things like you know like what you're growing now and, and if it's uh, tomatoes and peppers and whatever have you right and um, you know we were very good friends to the point that when I left Massey he was one of them to you know come by and say that you know he was a bit 
you know um you know saddened by the fact anyway right so i guess that's how you have to do it and like i said it's not about being friends in the long run i, I didn't think about that then anyway but it's just showing that you know what you are doing and that you have a job to do and that you would not let anybody overtake your meeting per se right so if i can go through some of the other points um inconsistent meetings and participants i mentioned that lack of resources management commitment to fulfill its goals right and again this is a very serious issue where if the company doesn't have the resources but they you know it comes out in the safety committee let me get back that slide for you all it comes out in the safety committee that you know we need monies for training we need monies for buying ppe but the managers are there and then they are saying yes but at the end of the day you don't get that money then it defeats the purpose of the safety committee i'm just looking at the time i'm seeing about 35 minutes would have gone already um maybe i can i really wanted to do another concept but i guess i'll try to bring this one down in the next couple of slides as well right um so a low number of action off items being completed completed sorry and uh, inconsistent or a lack of a proper meeting room so yes my my point is there this would have been meeting room at the end here anyway right um so i think what i'll do let me show you the past paper there let me go back right i i really wanted to cover uh more than two but the time seemed to have gone there with this one right so the two i would have covered would have been um consultation what are some information the employer must consult the employees about and if i can get back the slide that i just did there uh this itself the head in here could be tweaked into a passive question which would have been which would have been sorry um outline the factors which influence how a safety committee is or is not right and again if you put your mind in i can really come up with much more like i said think about um if you were ever part of a group and what caused it to be a really good answer that that is but well, not on the slide anyway would have been um a lack of notes taken in the meeting right now we have a proper name for it which is the minutes of the meeting so if i if during the meeting no one takes notes then how could you track what would have happened in the meeting right let me try and um change this out uh, like i said this software is given a bit of issues if it sticks anyway here you'd hear me just repeating some of the points uh when it starts back going right software went off a bit right um hopefully you're still looking at this and um i have a passive pass right um i mean really old and i mean older ones is one in which back in the old days um they i mean they actually used to refer to the exam as a1 and a2 let me try to get back that and show you right so back in the old days um ngc1 would have been called a1 or i guess now anyway ng1 would have been called a1 and uh two would have been called um a2 and this is way back um 2005 anyway right but there's a really nice question here uh if i can just get this arrow to increase it right i guess you can probably stop the presentation um and then my webcam is in the corner let me just try to move the webcam a bit and put it to the top right um let's see how that we can look at the first piece because if i do put the webcam at the top it means i'll be blocking the top now anyway right so um the first piece of it and this would have been one of the 20 mark questions 20 marks meaning that this would have been the number or you know afraid of a 20 mark question what you have to know is that a 20 mark question is nothing more than you know some shorter questions put together really a 20 mark question is two eight mark questions and a four mark quest piece of it says um outline the benefits an organization of having a health and safety committee right so just quickly based on the time um 
the verb is outline you'll have to write in complete sentences and you want four separate answers those four should be on four separate lines right um, per se so um, and a line should be or sorry a sentence should be about maybe two lines long for each one so when you think of your answers you want to write them over in a proper sentence and the sentence must be about two lines long but you need four like that right so what is the benefits of having a health and safety committee now we mentioned i highlight some but I'll, I'll say them first before i actually highlight them some would have been it shows management commitment right but um just for the sake of writing you cannot just say uh it shows management commitment that's just four words you need a proper sentence so the way to make the sentence you can say it shows management commitment and you can go on to give an example of that right so i'll read it from here um all the answers are just about a bit so uh the answers given it demonstrates management commitment right and again that itself i guess could be an answer it shows compliance with legal requirement to consult with employees and this is on the slide this is a piece i didn't get to do it was just on the slide that i left off there i did mention it was a law in the uk uh, but i didn't give the name of the laws it's right on this slide where you can read ahead and you'll see it it facilitates consultation and communication with the workforce via employee representative well that's a kind of nice sentence anyway i suppose you can just probably if you want to make a, a, a one extra line there you can probably just pick something for the to consult about you can say it demonstrates um sorry my mistake it facilitates consultation with employees with the workforce via employees or employee representatives such as it could be a means of addressing a change in a risk level someone is calling me just try to take this off a bit right so it could um it could just be that you give an example of it and that is able to give you the um additional mark right so yes i'm actually at the office right all alone so you know it's just a matter to answer the phones as well all right um it provides a means of recording discussions that have taken place on health and safety matters and it helps to foster a positive health and safety culture by encouraging employee involvement and ownership and again just to give that some substance you can just think about a subject matter right so to add to the end of it so it helps foster a positive health and safety culture by encouraging employee involvement and ownership in doing risk assessments in performing accident investigations you can just give it a subject matter right so four answers is enough and again i am not too sure i really wanted this video to be um 30 minutes long it's already 45 minutes long right um part b outline the reasons why a health and safety committee may prove to be ineffective in practice this is actually eight marks right um i don't want to interfere too much with it but it's eight marks at the back there and this would have been exactly what we said now again what is required is that you come up with eight answers and these eight answers be uh in sentence format about maybe two lines again if you are worried about where do i get the second line from after you come up with the actual answer for example the reason why the committee may be ineffective in practice is that you know you have a lack of um resources right so after you come up with the answer where do you get the other sentence from you can just think about an example of what resources then right what could be and you have to talk about money and time and you know money and time for uh purchasing ppe or having training done and those are really simple examples at the moment just trying to make it as simple as i could based on the time but you can give that some some thought and just think and think of an uh, i guess an example of the answer and you'll be able to get the second sentence right so i would not go through this i'll just read some from here again if i can just um right get that highlighted there so part b um answers to part b which would have been um let's go back to the top right uh answers to part b would have been 
you know, um, why would a safety committee be ineffective in practice, right? Right, so they had, um, just to take it from where it starts, um, there was no term of reference for the committee. There was no agenda and or minutes for the meeting being produced. There was an unbalance uh, balance between management and employee representative, poor chairmanship, no access to the decision-making process, infrequent meetings, inappropriate topics for discussion, and no access to health and safety expertise. Again, these are really nice ones, right? Inappropriate topics is really a good one, right? And this this is um, what it happens a lot in Trinidad and Tobago, where you have the committee meets, they have the best of facilities, but then someone brings up an issue, and then that person may be a bit like I said assertive and you end up something that is not even on your agenda again I don't allow that but again seen it happen before I remember going to a meeting and um, the, the chairman of the meeting um, and this is a big meeting this was uh, what you call an um, I really don't want to say it on YouTube because this is public information right as well but it was a big meeting and the chairman of the meeting said um, you know they're not going to follow the agenda and automatically i thought about well why did i come why did i come this was like a, a regional meeting like why did i come in the first place because i came to discuss what was on the agenda and then what what they end up talking about would have been ridiculous things like someone left you know food in the fridge for two weeks at that facility and yeah, someone left I guess it was like I think I think it was a KFC corn someone left a KFC corn in, in I guess in the fridge for like months or whatever have you and uh, you know that after that meeting I did not go go back and I still haven't gone back those who know me I bet they probably know what I'm talking about I haven't gone back you know to those meetings anyway because it was so you know um, not well conducted anyway right so I guess you get the idea that what can cause a meeting, a committee meeting to be ineffective. We mentioned a lot of stuff. Uh, believe it or not, I did say that to kind of think about this a bit, I really, there's so much a simple answers I thought about and I think I'll mention to you all things like, you know, not having a consistent place to meet, um, inappropriate topics. I mentioned things about, you know, um, not even being able to take notes, right? A really simple one is, lack of proper welfare facilities ac and even things like power failure right power failure is a simple answer why a committee would not be able to meet anyway right um part c i guess i have to go back up to the side here let me see if i get this to go a bit uh, i guess i just is saying to move the webcam back down right so uh, let's we can get this done for you all again Right, so part C, um, identify a range of methods that an employer can use to provide health and safety information directly to individual employees. Now again, this is really nice. Uh, I've seen this question over and over again. Um, a range of information that the employer can use to provide health and safety information directly to employees. Again, um, this is eight marks, so eight responses are needed. However, the verb used here is identified now what that means um uh well i was going to say that it means one sentence is needed but i know in the new scheme for those who haven't looked at it yet on the website or i guess in your books the truth is they are not even using these terms anymore now right but um you know the most common verb now when i say march 2020 is what is so what is a range of inf or what is a range of method that an employer can use to provide health and safety information directly to individual employees and when they say what is um or in the case of identify here one sentence is good enough right and it doesn't have to be a long sentence it can be you know i guess you would know what a file page looks like it can be you know three quarter lines of that of that file page the, the, the length of the line three tr three quarter lengths of the line right if i didn't say that properly there all right so three quarter lengths of the line or it could be the full line it could be the line a little bit more but you know identify you can get away by giving a she 
explain or outline right so um, this I thought was just common sense I, how would you how would the employer you know uh, what methods would they use to relate the information back to the employees and if you go straight to it um, if I can get this back down a bit if you go straight to the latter piece of it you would see um, part C if a range of valid methods such as notice boards team briefings trading sessions including the induction and toolbox talks newsletters and the inclusion of messages with wages or pay slips or with the wages or pay slips posters competition and signs and one on one briefings such as appraisal sessions so really all the ways you can think about how an employee can talk to the sorry the employer can talk to the employees right toolbox talks newsletters this one has a really creative one you know i guess uh, a message with your pay slip and again i guess in today's day and age i did mention that this was a pretty old passy um 2005 um i'm trying to remember if it had the internet i suppose it must have had the internet um in 2005 not everybody would have had you know cell phones and stuff though and it probably didn't have Wi-Fi on your phones as yet right but you know another answer it could have been emails and you know I guess WhatsApp right um, memos could have been in this list as well right uh, and so quite a lot more uh, the company's intranet could have been an answer I mean these answers again even if it's from Nibosh you should know it's not limited to date and time right date and time has changed the same question can can actually you know um, be placed in another past paper but the answer scheme or the range of answers could be more based on our change in society anyway right so um, I'll stop this one here um, I guess I was not successful in sticking to the half an hour I did you know just plan three concepts but again planning and presenting is a bit different anyway right let me just try to get the webcam down to the bottom again right so um, right so please remember to give these a try um, I mean this is a classic spoon feeding there I think the mic the mic up just dropped again there is classic spoon feeding in that you have the um you 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 have the end and then you also saw the answers right um i really want to see the questions i mean video um try the questions the office still is open um on certain times now right i mean we have as be half 12 right now at the moment and I, I i actually would be leaving in about half an hour time right remember there's a call before uh, my number again 489 you know uh the office 6529077 back any reply from us in a reasonable time for saturday night um, Sunday and that and, and that's at that same time I am actually home as well right but once you do it and we get it and it's Monday but we I am correcting them I, I'm trying to look around see if I have any have sent them out to the students already right but um, I am correcting them and scanning those of us who wrote it and I'm gonna email you those because you know my writing or my comments on the paper itself right so um this is a, again a, a, a maybe the fourth or fifth appeal in some work but have not been seen YouTube videos you can pause and go back at it at Skype session and that if you can look at them I really wanted to have um, I guess a full uh, hand of papers anyway <laughs> so please keep those going remember um, to swell um, not just the first one just sign in if you have something good to say fine if not you can put active anyway towards the session again this is the, the best we can do given under and right? but again if you just want to sign in maybe you just had a look at it and you just want to send um you know john here or john is viewing etc that is good enough and to look at them as much as come you know um uh facebook anyway that i would try to mention if it's really something you wanted to call you personally during this week right you are unsure about something i make the effort to call if it's something i cannot um in the comment section itself um keep safe i'm looking around for my hand sanitizer there um, you know outside there is getting up you know as we speak around the world right keep safe um, and uh 
I would probably have an uh, based on how it is about an hour long now, about 55 and uh, hopefully we'll see soon once. Uh, rest of your day folks, bye.